Charlotte Cracker debuted on the 12th of August 2019. This new Sugo Fest exclusive debuted on a Treasure Sugo Fest to coincide with the release of Smoothie and Oven, bringing a Whole Cake Island and Charlotte family theming. This Treasure Sugo Fest batch debuted characters such as Blessing for a Daughter, Pound, and Tea Party Intruder, Jinbei and the Sugo Fest exclusive character of the batch brought along further buffs for the powerhouse and slasher class. Unfortunately, his captain effect doesn't hold up as well as others may have hoped. However, he makes it up with his special providing fantastic slot change great chain edition mechanics as well as a solid color affinity boost. Introducing Thousand Armed Attacks Charlotte Cracker. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. Thanks for checking out yet another episode of the Legends of OPTC, and this week we're going to go ahead and take a look at Legend Cracker, which is kind of like um, the continuation of the previous episode, as we talked about Sanji and Judge, who were solely focused around boosting the powerhouse class. Cracker is very similar in a way, and we'll talk more about him once we get to him, but this was actually a treasure map Sugo Fest, and this debuted alongside this treasure map with Smoothie Oven, so it kind of makes sense, you have Smoothie Oven as the treasure map, Cracker is the TM legend but remember back then you know there weren't legends that were restricted to treasure map he was just a generic legend which you know gladly you know cracker is still widely available and then they also had Colosseum Katakuri drop at this time as well as well as Clash Big Mom so very very Big Mom pirates focused so a smoothie oven you know we all pretty much know what they do they're actually a pretty decent unit at the time being an orb booster uh, and also being able to generate some slots for you with their switch ability making slots beneficial and their special allowing you to treat them as matching and just shuffle the slots into into what you need as, as well as providing that orb boosting effect but the interesting thing as well is this with their switch effect being able to do 20 times their attack at as end as end of turn damage so you can use their switch ability to get around resilience buffs which is actually very useful and the two other tm rare recruits that debuted at the time was pound as well as jimbei now i don't think these characters have returned in the sugo metal exchange thus far but, you know, could definitely happen in the future. Psy Powerhouse Free Spirit. Special ability reduces special bind and increased damage taken by two turns and then reduces Rainbow Shield by three turns. Not a great special, I'll admit. Not the best special ever, but it is what it is. And then we have Jinbei as the other TM Rare Recruit, also being a powerhouse unit. And this special ability removing bind and uh, chain limit. I can't remember if that's chain reduction or chain lock. I think it's chain lock by three turns, as well as dealing a little bit of damage at the end of the turn for three turns, so also getting around resilience. And then they also had this really weird effect of depending on your treasure map level, you'd actually get different boosts. So this guy gives you an orb boost, and it scales up the higher your navigation level is on a treasure map. But we're all here to talk about Legend Cracker, the, the star of the show today, which is Charlotte Cracker, Thousand Arms Attack, who is a quick powerhouse slasher captain ability, unfortunately very, very bland. 3.75 times attack to powerhouse and then a 1.35 hp boost if a character is fighter slasher striker or shooter and that's literally all he does not a great captain ability not the best i mean attack multiplier when it came out i mean again you still got to remember four times multiplier was around the you know the cap that most characters would get to some were slightly higher but not super duper high um 3.75 was very middle of the road it was pretty average and considering it's only just to one class we were hoping it was a lot better and the fact that it doesn't give anything else no matching slots no cooldown reduction end of turn heals just very bland captain but they make up for that with his special his special ability was amazing at the time and saw so so much play so first of all changes empty bomb recovery g block into matching slots and then gives himself a matching slot as well so that's really cool really good all manipulation then he says if your captain is a fighter slasher shooter or a striker you get a 1.1 chain addition. This is a chain addition buff for two turns because this is a, an old style uh, in, in terms of formatting, but it's a 1.1 chain addition, not a multiplicative buff. Then if your captain is free spirit, cerebral, powerhouse, or driven, 
boosts color affinity of those four classes, Free Spirit, Cerebral, Powerhouse, and Driven, by 1.75, also for two turns. So this character, fantastic ore manipulation, good color affinity, and fantastic chain boost. I think when he came out, he was one of the highest chain boosters in the game. And then as well as that, with everything else bundled up into one unit, super powerful. Also have a, has a really unique sailor ability. When, a, when any other powerhouse or slasher launches a special, reduces cooldown by one. So really, really cool. So not only was this a nice buff for powerhouse, but also for slashers, which following this character, uh, this, these characters that just seem to be chaining together, Sanji Judge into Cracker, and then Cracker chains into the next batch, which was uh, V2 Zoro and V2 Mihawk. So providing lots of buffs to both powerhouse and slasher in this one unit. And also has a very powerful support effect that saw lots of play as well, removing uh, chain coefficient reduction and chain lock for three turns, as well as providing a chain boost. Just such a good support. Like this, this support's been used a lot. Just a fantastic unit all around. And we're going to be showcasing him as a captain today, but make note that this character was definitely used more as a crewmate than as a captain. And now we're back at the wheel. We've got three different events to take on potentially today. Clash Judge, Colosseum Katakuri, and Colosseum Pika. We're going to go ahead and use Cracker as the captain, build a powerhouse focused team to beat one of these pieces of content. So let's go ahead and spin that wheel and let's see what it's going to land on today. What are we going to land on? What's it going to be? Colosseum or Clash? It's going to be Clash Judge. All right, this should be a really exciting one to go ahead and take on. So let's go ahead and try and build a team to take on Clash Judge, which definitely has a couple of tricky, uh, tricky stages for sure. So we'll see how things go, but Clash Judge shouldn't be a problem. All right, so we're now in game with our man, Charlotte Cracker, and this is the team that we're gonna be using to take on Clash Judge. So a couple things to note, the Cracker that I do have is level 150, and it is Limit Break Expanded. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head if Limit Break Expansion was out at this point in the game, but, you know, obviously level 150, it isn't really gonna be a clean showing, at least he doesn't have the buffed abilities because this is the six star regular version not the six star plus as well as whitebeard being at level 150 and he does have a level limit break with a slightly buffed ability which means that you know what you see in this video it's going to be relatively close to what you would have seen back when all of these characters first came out we've got colosseum neptune colosseum cat viper and then Watatsume. Watatsume really can be changed out for just about anything, to be honest. But everything else has like a, a clear role in this team. And you guys are going to see exactly uh, how we plan to take on this content. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's do it. And here we go. The tyrannical father judge himself. So what happens as the preemptive attack again? Uh, I can't remember exactly what happened as the preemptive. He's going to shuffle our slot and then reduce the chances of landing on a matching slot. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. That's kind of frustrating. I remember on stage two, there was uh, there's some mobs on stage two we need to kill on the first turn because if you don't kill them, they actually do a lot of special reverse mechanics and we don't want to have to deal with that. Of course, first thing is first, we need to get cooldowns. Uh, another thing that I didn't really mention as well when we're going through the team is we're using the Zunisha ship, and that's one of the one of the other reasons why the Powerhouse class at this point in time was considered to be one of the best classes in the game, because this ship is so good. You know, obviously making it a lot easier to land perfects. Uh, it was a, a, like the highest ship attack boost you could get at 1.55, had a really good HP boost, and recovery and tandem slots are beneficial. All of those effects in a ship were so good because not too many captains back in the day could make recovery and tandem beneficial. It wasn't very common like it is today. So the fact that this ship had all of these effects, it was just a power creep of ships. It was definitely considered to be the best ship in the game, at least in terms of power and the effects that it would apply to your team. Anyways, I digress. Let's actually get into, into clearing some content. Let's go ahead and, uh, and do a little bit of uh, stalling. Go ahead and kill that guy there. I think these green guys are the ones that we want to we got to get rid of. So we'll try and kill all these green guys first. I can't remember if this guy does anything bad. So I guess we're going to take the hit. Hopefully he doesn't do anything bad on this turn. He doesn't. Okay, perfect. Uh, we don't have many matching slots, which is a little concerning. So we're going to try and just, you know, shuffle some slots around. Maybe we'll get a little bit lucky. Uh, we pick up some more matching slots. So these guys in the back, you see these uh, these three quick enemies. These dudes, if you don't kill them in the first turn, they inflict special reverse. We don't want to have to deal with that. So we need to kill all of them in this first turn. So hopefully we can do that. And then we can just stall on, on the evolvers here in the front row. So let's get it.
Oh, we did it. Beautiful. That actually worked out so, so well. We did do a bit of damage to that Elder Turtle, but I don't think it really matters in the grand scheme of things. It's going to be great. And now we can take this opportunity to do a bit of stall to ensure that we can get all of our specials ready to go when we reach Stage 3. Uh, stage 3? Stage 4. Stage 4 is when we're going to start using some specials. It doesn't really matter on Stage 3, though. Stage 3 is going to have more mobs that we can potentially stall on, I guess. Um, but we don't really want to do too much stall from this point onwards here. So when Neptune's at a 4 turn cooldown, which he's about to be, I think we're going to go ahead and move on. Because we will need Neptune for stage uh, stage 4, so that's going to be something that we're going to have to do. So stage 3, um, we've got these mobs in the front row, and you see that the HP bar is really short. Um, this does signify that this character has not a lot of HP, but insanely high defense. So normally you can't really kill them with normal attacks, unless if you have absurd damage increasing effects. Um, and then we've also got the seahorse, so we've got to make sure that we can kill him. So, uh, let's go ahead and kill the seahorse. We'll kill the guy on the one turn cooldown. I don't think we'll kill all of them this turn, but I guess let's see how we do. Let's get it. I guess technically we put, we could have probably killed there, but we do need to actually stall one more turn. Just so Neptune is now on a two turn cooldown, because as I said, we do need him for the next stage. Then again, now that I'm thinking about it, it probably didn't matter anyway, because now that I'm remembering, Neptune does have a cremate ability that reduces his own cooldown every time another character uses a special, which means that we don't actually need to stall as much. So yeah, let's just move on. We don't even need to stall anymore. Let's go. Bing bong, there we go. So stage four, I remember when, when this piece of content first came out, it was so annoying. All of these enemies with these stupid slot barriers. And yeah, I remember looking at this, even just, you know, trying to get teams sorted for this. And like this stage is so annoying. But luckily, we've got something that we can deal with this stage quite comfortably. So first of all, we're going to have this Neptune special. This is going to remove the despair that's inflicted on our crew and give us an orb boost for three turns. And this is very important for multiple reasons. Obviously, we need to remove the despair, but the orb boost for multiple turns is so good because the final stage versus judge has a special limiter. You're not allowed to use more than two specials on that final stage. So carrying an orb boost into the last stage means we don't have to worry about having an orb boost ready to go. So that's obviously a fantastic thing to have. Uh, next, we can go ahead and use the cracker special to remove some of these block slots. Uh, and this crack is special, Honey Pretzel, we've already discussed it in the uh, bef in the video before, in the clip before. But it's such a powerful special. Changing slots, color affinity boost, chain boost, incredibly powerful. And as I mentioned, we need to deal with these really pesky enemies with these barriers. Luckily, we have Whitebeard special. Now, as I said, Whitebeard, you know, this character, this has the level limit break version of his special, which is not normally what you would have back when this content first came out. But having access to a special like this is really good because even at the old school uh, style of, uh, of characters before the level limit break, um, it would still uh, clear the, the characters with, with the barriers because they do have less HP than this guy right here. So he's standing by his lonesome now. We can just go ahead and pass the turn, no problems. And now we can move into the final stage. We're going to still have the orb boost from Neptune, which gives that 1.75 orb boost to Cerebral and Powerhouse. And now we're at Judge's stage. And Judge is also quite annoying too. He does have a strength slot barrier and he says you're not allowed to use an orb boosting special further solidifying that neptune is a god on stage four of this content so how are we going to deal with this we need to go ahead and use the neko special which is uh i remember when neko first came out this was another reason why powerhouse and both striker were just so good because being able to get a full board of slots and an attack boost with it with one special launch in a free-to-play unit was like unheard of absolutely insane uh, so now we have an attack boost and we have an orb boost and now we can use cracker special which can give us a 1.75 color affinity and a 1.1 chain boost and we're good to go now we do need to hit the enemy with a strength slot to pierce his barrier which is kind of annoying but we do have another strength character that we can hit last with so that that character will still do really really good damage so without further ado let's go ahead and kill judge let's get it Boom, there we go. Getting the knockout with Neko as the final hit. We had Watatsume, but as I said, you know, Watatsume, he didn't really need to be on the team. Uh, you just, any strength unit that's powerhouse that can kind of slot into that situation would work fine. Just so you have two strength units, one to pierce the barrier, one to actually do the final hit to do as much damage as you possibly can. Just a really fun team to use. So that is going to wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for watching yet another episode of the Legends of OPTC. And looking forward into next week's episode, we're going to be covering slashes once again. V2 Mihawk 
Hulk and V2 Zoro debut together in a really, really cool Sugo Fest. So that is exactly what we're going to be covering next week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video though. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. On that guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.